Princess Leia hairdo on? Check. Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to lecture one. Now this is a remake of an earlier lecture one I did because my early lecture one really kind of stank. Okay, fair enough. So this lecture was based on, however, a question that had come through a Reddit subgroup, the Korg Reddit subgroup. And somebody had asked, what synthesizers pair well together, especially with the MS-20. And so today, I'm going to mess a little bit with the Korg MS-20 and another synthesizer. But the main reason for messing with the other synthesizer is to really accentuate the power of the legendary Korg MS-20 high-pass and low-pass filters. And I'm going to talk a little bit about filter routing, band pass filtering, and notch filtering. All of these you can do with the Korg MS-20. My source will be varied. My source today, kind of the scientific approach, is I'll take my Alesis, I have a QS here, and I'll run a sine wave through the MS-20. I'll run a sawtooth wave through the MS-20. I'll run a square wave through the MS-20, in each case kind of exercising the Korg filters. And then I have a really nasty, gnarly, harmonically rich patch called Buzz Clip with the Alesis. And I'll show how that responds, that signal also responds as filtered through the MS-20. And then if that wasn't enough, <laughs> we'll do one more thing, and that is compare and contrast the bandpass filter, the typical way a Korg MS-20 works, the filter sequence, it creates a bandpass filter, and I'll show you how to actually produce a notch filter in the MS-20, and how the notch filter gives you some sonic space to pour something else in, another synth, to pair in another synth by utilizing filtration high-pass and low-pass filters. All right, so before we do all that, let's take a moment and talk a little bit about theory, a little bit about filtration theory. When we think about synthesis, synthesizer sonic synthesis, it's all about subtraction. It's called subtractive synthesis. I won't talk too much about envelopes today, but I do want to talk a little bit about what filters can do. And when filters subtract, they subtract sound that's being offered by the oscillators. When an oscillator is fired, it's giving everything it's got. A whole, the whole schmear is coming out of the oscillator. What we then do is with envelopes and filters, modify that to give us the sonic experience we choose, we wish to, to which we wish to create. We think about the noise that's coming out of a synthesizer. Maybe it's a low frequency. Low frequency is like a tuba, for example, or high frequency, like a bugle. These frequencies then are across the frequency spectrum. And when we look at the MS-20, the MS-20 takes the signal out of the oscillator and dumps it into two filters. The first filter it dumps it into is the high pass filter. And imagine there's some kind of frequency cutoff. We'll talk about what that is in a second, but just hang with me here. Some kind of a, a frequency with which we want to generate attenuation. We want to dial it back a little bit, right? And then beyond that point, we want as much of it as we can get. This is a high pass filter. High pass filter. And it's passing a high frequency after a point. This low frequency, the tuba, the tuba, nothing, 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 at some point on here, and it's a voltage control point, there's some voltage I've dialed into on the MS-20. At that point, it kicks open a, a, a basically a filter that allows that sound to progress through the signal chain. Nothing, nothing, nothing. This point then allows, ah, now I hear those frequencies. High-pass filter, also known as a low-cut 
filter, a low cut filter because it's cutting out the low, or a high pass filter, it's passing the highs. And the MS20, it typically, generally speaking, the signal chain runs through the high pass filter first. Then there's another point, another voltage point up here. Call this voltage two. Voltage two. Up, oh, change the pens over here. Voltage one. Actually, they could be the same voltage because there's two different filters. But apart from that, there's also then a low pass filter. And low pass filter then is passing all of the low frequencies. Let's go ahead and draw that line that away. All right. And then above this point, there is no allowed high frequency, or at least the high frequency is attenuated. It's turned down. So you can imagine then the, the high pass filter in green, the low pass filter in red, also known as a high cut filter, high cut filter, low pass filter. It's cutting out the high frequencies. It's passing low, passing low, passing low, passing low, passing low, pass up. Oh, and now it's no longer passing any more frequencies. It's, it's basically taking care of anything that's beyond that. It's pulling it out. This high pass filter and low pass filter together, this region here is called a band pass. Sorry for my crappy handwriting, but we're passing a band of sound. Now you can turn the filters all the way down and pass everything, or turn the knobs up and pass a slice of sound. The band pass is that slice of sound. So let's bounce on over to the MS-20 and set up the classic routing, high pass, low pass filter routing on the MS-20. And then we'll exercise the legendary Korg MS-20 high pass and low pass band pass filter with a signal from the Alesis. We'll throw through it a sine wave, a sawtooth wave, a square wave, and see how the Korg MS-20 band pass filter filters that sound, that, that pure oscillation. And then we'll throw at it a really gnarly, a harmonically rich patch from the QS6 called Buzz Clip. And we'll find that we can actually get more with less. All right, let's go. Quick run through what I got going on here. Signal in is coming from my Alesis. I've got the signal out then in the external signal processor bumping on up into the external signal in path on the MS-20. I also have a trigger out and the trigger out will be cranked on my threshold level down here at the final knob in the external signal processor so that when I do have a signal come in from my Alesis, it will crack open the envelope. What I have also going on here then is I have my mod wheel connected up to my input controls for my high pass and low pass filter. The idea here is pumping in an external signal from a Paired synthesizer enables me with the mod wheel to dramatically impact the signal coming from my other synthesizer, enjoying all the benefits of the Korg MS-20, the legendary Korg MS-20 high pass and low pass filters. And one last little bit here too, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Recognize my trigger out is going into my trigger in on the MS-20. That's what's going to crack open the gate to open my envelopes. Also, the mod wheel is utilizing a doubler. I want to make sure we're all seeing this. Doubler is simply two 3.5 millimeter stereo jacks. MS-20 is all mono, but it works just fine as a stereo doubler. This enables you to double up and triple up and quadruple up patches. I have three or four or five of these things floating around. I use them all the time. So that's what I'm utilizing out of the mod wheel output to the cutoffs on the high pass and low pass filter. Let's load in a sine wave. Right, here we got a sine wave going. You can see that C3. Go ahead and hit the mod wheel a bit. And notice I'm rotating the mod wheel. Not a lot of impact. Let's throw a, uh, I think it's saw next, saw wave. Yep. A little different sound. Ah, some more harmonics. Mod wheel it. You can really hear that. Actually, look, I'm building. 
I'm building and removing, but I'm also I can also build harmonics further out the frequency spectrum. Look at that. I'm building them out. Alright, let's try a square wave next. A little different look. Watch that. Oh, see I'm building on high frequency and then I'm pulling it back down. Let's build it back up again. Very cool. Now, super harmonics. It's called buzz clip. Wow. Let's go ahead and modify that. Down. Ooh, look at, look at me bringing it back up. Hear that? It's an example of bringing more than existed before. Okay. Sine wave, one pure tone, C3 on the keyboard actually. Not a lot of harmonics, not a lot of impact, not a lot to pull away from with respect to the high pass and low pass filter. Saw wave, more, square wave even more, and then eventually we had that buzz clip, that gnarly patch I used. A lot of harmonics, a lot of impact. So that was all band pass work. And it's what allows the MS-20 to cut through a mix like no other synthesizer. This idea that we are actually selectively passing a band, a wad of sound, if you will. In fact, when we look at the rats, the book closed on me. When we look at the, the signal routing here in our MS-20 book, let's see this here, right? Here are our, our oscillators through the mixer into the high pass filter and then into the low pass filter. And we're able to modulate it with the envelope generators and the modulation. There are things we can do with the envelopes, basically the, the, the amount of impact the filter would have. But it still runs from high pass to low pass. That high pass to low pass, high pass first, then low pass second, creates the band pass. What's also happening though, is this sound is then grabbing that sonic space. These frequent, the frequency range of the bandpass grabs that sonic space in a mix. So by default, how the MS-20 is set up is to wedge itself into a mix. The thing though is, the MS-20 is a tremendous synthesizer with all kinds of great harmonic capability. But when it jams itself into a mix into one spot, yeah, absolutely, you can take advantage of it. But you can do more with the MS-20. When we look at this, now maybe you haven't spent too much time looking at the manual, <laughs> but you know, engineers, that's what we do, right? Something called an external signal processor. So there's a whole other process, signal processing chain in the MS-20. And it enables you to bring stuff in, external stuff in, and modulate it, again, with high pass and low pass filters. You can see it says low cut and high cut. Remember, low cut means high pass, and high cut means low pass. They mean the exact same thing. And with these patch points, what this enables us to do is rather than having to force ourselves from the high pass to the low pass, or the low cut to the high cut, same thing, low cut equals high pass, high cut equals low pass, instead of having to force us through that signal chain, we can change things. Bring this in. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to route through the low pass filter first, and then through to the high pass filter. The signal chain enables us then to create this space, this sonic space within the frequency spectrum. This sonic space is open for us to pair another synthesizer in. We talk about pairing of synthesizers. That was the original conversation, the original question on Reddit. You can maybe pair a synthesizer in the low end or the high end in 
when you've got a, a bandpass filter with the Korg, but the Korg is really going to be very, very firm, very, very loud, very, very proud of this frequency zone. But patching in a notch filter, it's a notch. That's what this is called. This is called the notch. Patching in a notch filter allows you to enjoy the low pass region and the high pass region, all that Korg MS20 oscillator goodness at the low end and at the high end, but then bring something else, some other synthesizer, into the notch and give you a really full sounding frequency spectrum, thus pairing two synthesizers together. Let's go ahead and show you how that works. All right, so what I've got here is sort of the standard setup. We're going to run a signal. We're going to use one oscillator only, one oscillator, square wave, run the signal typically through the high pass and low pass filter, and give that a listen. And now I'll be utilizing the SQ1 over here. SQ1, super important piece of kit. If you're going to own an MS20, you really want to have an SQ1. The SQ1, by way of analogy, is kind of like ice is to bourbon. A really nice bourbon, if you're a bourbon drinker, right? Pouring bourbon over ice opens up that bourbon and helps the bourbon give you everything it has to offer. SQ1, same sort of idea. It's a great piece of kit that will help you get everything that the MS-20 has to offer. So we'll use the SQ-1 to give us a groove. Future lectures, we'll talk about how to do that, but for now, just take, take my SQ-1 as a gate source. Gonna utilize square wave, only one oscillator, high pass, low pass filter, sort of the standard routing. I do have it presently routed on down to the signal processor, but I've got both the low cut and high cut frequencies out of the way. So only the standard routing will work in modifying the filtration here, the filtration. But recognize that I do have a patch coming out of signal out into signal into the external signal processor and then out to my mixing board. I also have a signal out going into my, whoops, for that, going into my matriarch down here to give me a little bit of delay just to kind of spice up the sound just a touch, just a touch. All right, let's play with this a little bit here. Okay, let's go ahead and toss this in then. Let's begin to band pass filter this bad boy a little bit. do a lot more of this obviously but this gets us kind of going here with a band pass going there right kind of hear the the way a band pass sounds passing that kind of that width through the frequency kind of a narrow width get widen a little bit but you can see where they would take a lot of the mix up I can take high end fit it up at the top it down low but either way there's still a region with which it is really filling up and I have to find some other place to be with another piece of equipment another instrument or synthesizer all right so we have our band pass filter set up on our Korg MS20 we're gonna use the SQ1 as that groove, you heard me go on and on with the groove, right? And I want to add to that the Alesis. Again, this lecture was about pairing synthesizers. So let's now try and pair, sonically pair, my Alesis QS6 with my MS20. You've got your Princess Leia hairdo on here. Let's hear how these two synthesizers talk together and if they're getting along. Let's give it a listen.
Okay, so are these two synthesizers getting along? Do they sound like they're getting along? I'm trying to have them have a conversation. The Core Game S20 is saying, I have got a point, I have got a point. And the Elise is saying, are you sure? Are you sure? But there's so much sonic pressure in my head listening to that because they're occupying the same sonic space in the mix. Now, I could separate them, you know, literally set, separate them. I could send the Korg to the low end of the spectrum and the Elisa's to the high end of the spectrum, but then they're still not having a conversation, right? They're just squared off in separate corners of the room. Oh, I don't want that. I want them to, to together have a conversation with each other, sonically with each other, not against each other in the f one in the other's face, right? That's not what I want. So let's do this. Let's set up the notch filter. I'll set up a notch filter on the MS-20. And what we'll do is we'll send the S uh, MS-20 to the, a little bit of the low end, a little bit of the high end. We'll bring that, we'll put a notch in place separate the MS-20's voice, it's so much sonic power behind it, there's room and power for us to be able to do that with the MS-20, so we can crack open space in the MS-20 patch to allow us then to pour into that the Alesis QS6. And now we'll get them to have a conversation. So let's go ahead and set that up, shall we? Okay, again with this, let's go ahead and now take the high pass filter and pull that all the way down. Get that rid of that completely. And then we hear a lot of low end stuff going on right now because we've got a low pass filter letting some stuff through. But now we're going to mess with the notch, and that is we'll let the low pass filter be the first thing. We'll come out of that into our external signal processor through the amp there as signal levels up and now we'll mess with the low cut frequency which would be the high pass filter so rather than high pass to low pass we are now going to go low pass to high pass let's start pulling this in a little bit I'll really choke it way up it's not what I want though I do want some low in there. Gotta watch where I grab that though. Yeah. sounds very different, sounds very different from the bandpass filter, the notch filter. All right, so let's go ahead and give that a listen uh, on the system. Now, they're having a conversation. I want to step you through on the MS-20 flow diagram in the MS-20 manual exactly what I did so that you can duplicate this as time permits. So here's what we got. We only used VCO1. VCO1 went through the signal chain, through the mixer, and we did not mess with 
the high pass filter here. We had that open that was set at zero. So the first thing we hit here then is the low pass filter. And we got that set, it looks like around, what's that, five or somewhere around six. Through the VCA voltage control amplifier to signal out. The signal out then zips all the way down to signal in. We again go through the amp. On the high cut, I think we're set at, it looks like 10, which means we're not using that, set at 10. So here on the low cut, which is the high pass filter, looks like we're set somewhere around 4. Looks like we set that at 4. That's how we set the notch up. That's the notch. Oh, it wasn't that messy. It wasn't that nice and messy. <laughs> my students complain mightily about my handwriting. And now, you can too. Filter impacts and harmonics, pairing of the synthesizer, bandwidth versus... No oh, hi! Hey, I'm just kind of checking off the boxes here of all the stuff I wanted to cover on this lecture. I hope you found this lecture helpful. I hope the idea of bandpass and also being able to increase the power of your MS-20 with a notch filter is something that you will find useful. All this stuff I give for you, for your use, Take it, uh, plagiarism is the highest form of flattery, except at a public university, so don't try it there, <laughs> okay? Um, also, I know this lecture seemed kind of long for YouTube videos. I mean, most YouTube videos are watch the cat roll in the dirt and uh, whatever, so this is not one of those kind of videos. This is more along the lines of an honest to goodness, you know, university level lecture. Um, they're long, my students complain about that, and now you can too. If this is truly one of the first MS-20 videos you found, you're a brand new MS-20 owner, uh, let's say you got one for a gift, or maybe you're one of the lucky ones who got one of the, uh, the original MS-20s with the big uh, plugs, and lucky you if you did, right? If you, but if you are new to the MS-20 or you're just sort of like digging a little more deeply in uh, semi-modular synthesis, right? This video is my first lecture, but there's a guy out there who has really fantastic beginner MS-20 videos. His name's Mark Dotty with Automatic Gainsay. That's the place you really want to start. So you may have landed on this video, and I hope I was helpful to you, but he has got a fantastic series of videos. So once you've bopped over to my Mark Dottie's site, picked up his videos, then come on back over to mine. Visit me for lectures two, three, four, and five with some demonstrations. Most of my work has to do with the integration of the MS-20 and the SQ-1 up over my shoulder there, uh, there, right? Piece of kit you're really gonna wanna have with your MS-20. Like I said, really helps crack open the MS-20 and all of its sonic power. All right, so uh, I guess that's all I've got. If you like these videos, please subscribe. H-A apostrophe D-L-B-A-H space YouTube. I will be your first hit. Go ahead and subscribe, and then uh, when these videos come out, when new stuff comes out, you'll be the first to know. Also, 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 I am happy to answer questions. My email address is on my YouTube site. So I am, if you have questions, MS-20, SQ-1, synthesis in general, I am more than happy to answer your questions. And if questions oftentimes become the lifeblood of this YouTube channel, and then I make videos based on the quantity of questions I might get on a subject. So absolutely, positively, feel free to reach out and I'll do the best I can to get you going. All right, well, that's all I've got for this video. Uh, you take care and we'll talk to you later.